Ladies and gentlemen, nerds and geeks, it's the Clay Golem here, and it is time. It's been a hot minute, not been many videos this week, partly because cautious of looking at additional add-on modules with the version 12 of Foundry looming over us. But that comes to an end today. It's time to update. So what's prompted this? Okay, so <laughs> we need to be really careful of version control because if we if we jump on the bandwagon update, um, and if you're following on places like Reddit, the official Foundry Reddit, you probably will have seen quite a few people going, oh, but this is not working and that's gone wrong and this is, oh, you know. Uh, and lots of actually really obvious comments about, I've just upgraded and now this doesn't work. It's like, well, of course not. You upgraded, you know, on day one and the mod creators, you know, Ripper et al. Um, haven't had a chance to update their stuff. So why am I doing this now? Mainly because if I bring this over here, we can see this is the, uh, this is Foundry, sorry, this is Ripper 93's um, Patreon page. And he has completed the update of all of his free modules. So not the Patreon ones, all the free ones. They've all been updated now for version 12. And as we know, we use a fair bit of Ripper stuff with things like levels uh, and, and bits like that, the combat carousel. So that's quite an important one that I need updated um, for, for what I want to do. Um, now, some people have looked at theirs and realized they don't need to update them, which is good. So what we're going to do in this video, of course, is we're going to click that scary button at the top right hand corner and we're going to update and I'm going to take you through how to update it. And we're going to update everything. So I've still got a D&D uh, &D game engine uh, game system update to do as well. So we're going to do that and then we're going to start looking at the some of the abilities and functions of it. Now, again, before I get into that. Um, Gambit's been in touch. So we did a video looking at uh, Gambit's pre-maids, which specifically looked at some of those additional items. And we looked at like the um, the uh, bullseye lantern uh, and the light effects for that. And of course, that really, really important attack of opportunity stuff, which wasn't working brilliantly with the template stuff, but it was absolutely functional, definitely better than what we had. So um, if you go back to that video that we did on that add-on of Gambit's pre-mades, um, you'll see Gambit's dropped us a me message there. A couple of things he's pointed out. Firstly, I owe him an apology. Uh, it looks like when I was looking at the lighting thing, which looked like it worked absolutely fine, um, I still had the torch module on. <laughs> so I was inadvertently demoing the torch uh, add-on rather than uh, rather than the light functions from um, from Gambit. So um, you can go read his comment in that video. There's a couple of bits he covers, and also my setup with my template um, for the attacks of opportunity. Um, it didn't look the way that he expected it to. So it clearly the way that I did it wasn't quite the way it works for him. I'm assuming Gambit's a him. That's probably not correct, is it? Just make that assumption. Um, so, uh, yeah, go read that comment um, and get a bit more understanding. Now, as we move into version 12 of Foundry, there'll be quite a few of those modules that will be impacted by the changes to not only the D&D game engine, but the version 12 itself. And, of course, one of the things that we will note um, is that we will have to revisit some of those modules. So I suspect at some point we will revisit Gambit's pre-mades to have a look at that as well. And he did drop a really interesting comment in his in, in his comment comment in his comment um about having another look at that template um for for the attack of opportunity and seeing if he can make it even slicker which would just be amazing wouldn't it because i mean it, it's it's great it works it's brilliant i love it um but even making that even slicker as a built-in function without that additional module the um the the walled templates module not needing that would be lovely all right i have waffled enough uh, let's talk about the version 12 release. So just dragging this over here. Um, so we are going to be looking at the highlights. Obviously, there's lots of little things in the background. Don't need that. They'll just randomly pop up just to annoy me mostly. Um, so we're going to have a quick look through here. Some of these things we've already talked about uh, and we know about. So we're going to have a look through what we expect to change. And then we'll actually do our update. Okay, so... Um, and again, just so you're aware, 
One of the reasons why we're going to update now is because Foundry have already done a patch release for version 12 to address some of the issues that people were having, which is, again, just absolutely perfect. Okay, general canvas goodness. So lots of things here around shady grids. So um, this is just on foundryvtt.com releases, by the way. So you can go and read this yourself. I'm not going to read every word for you because how dull. Um, but they've done some changes to shady grids that we'll hopefully look at. Uh, some work on the dynamic token rendering. And you've got some images in, over on the right here. Um, elevated tiles and more. So where version 11 introduced the concept of assigning elevation to tiles. Um, version 12 improves this and it gives us this idea of overhead underfoot etc which is going to be really really useful as a result the idea of roof tiles has changed instead of becoming a pair of toggles for whether the tile restricts light or restricts weather um, now we know that one of the things we're looking forward to is being able to allocate regions to specific things which will be marvelous um, okay so uh, informational drawings uh, now this is great so we can actually draw on our canvas for dm information um, as opposed to drawings for everybody so we just got a bit more you know two roles object and information so there's a couple of different ways we can use drawings now uh, and some performance stuff which is really important that they, you know we continue to focus on uh, making sure as many people as possible can access it from as many machines as possible regardless of their age um, these things do have a habit of just getting more and more complicated I'm most excited about uh, they call it regional delicacies but this is all about that scene regions part that we've already talked about but we've not had a chance to look at properly where we can effectively replicate some of the things that um, monks active tiles triggers is doing uh, but doing that directly in foundry itself so that's kind of built in and this is what that image here is talking about so we can block out weather effects or just create areas for weather effects. We can create triggers that we use for traps uh, and all sorts of other things like that. So we're going to have a real good play of that. Probably not in this video. This video is going to end up being quite long if we're not careful anyway. Um, but we definitely will be considering looking at those over the next few videos. All right. Um, this is important to recognize a region is not simply one shape but you can group shapes together so you can actually have multiple different uh, triggers effectively that all result in the same thing which is kind of useful if you want an effect to happen regardless of which door they enter a room on that's nice you can have different trigger regions okay uh, and it says about region can have multiple behaviors each triggered by one or more events um, very much again like monks active tile triggers um, basically bringing some of that in-house uh, adjust darkness level so this built-in behaviors things we can do with it adjust darkness level which means adjust light level execute macros which is brilliant because that's where a lot of the power comes from um, running scripts pausing the game and you know I like to use pausing the game for things like you've entered a room I want it to pause so that I've got an opportunity to as a DM to describe what's going on or we pause it when it asks for a saving throw or you've set off a trap and things like that suppress weather again okay. we looked at doing that already with the um, with the active effects um, but now that's built in teleport our tokens and we've done that with monks active tile triggers uh, and toggling various behaviors on and off in other words you come in this way and it turns off certain functions etc which is great so nothing a huge surprise in there but we've not played with it yet uh, application v2 so this is just about stuff that is kind of happening you can see it said talk about stuff that's happening in the background some grain ground work that is being done um, uh, that affects things like user configuration dialogues and things like that so that's kind of all stuff in the background that we're not necessarily going to see a huge impact on um, but it's all uh, it's all adding additional functions to be built on later environmental enhancements Okay, brilliant. Ambient, uh, scene ambience. So we've kind of already got that, but we've got improvements to that, which is good. Improved darkness sources. Now this is a good one. This is a this is a nice one. This one. 
Um, so representing darkness within scenes has evolved significantly since the early versions. Of course, first it was somewhat secret feature ooh, uh, that could be achieved by giving a light source a negative radius. So previously, basically, you had zero darkness and then you could add light sources, whether that was global illumination um, or, um, you know, individual torches and things on there. But you couldn't add darkness properly. So somebody casts a darkness spell yeah you can put a black circle on there but it wasn't really actually a light effect it was just a, um, a really it's just a template that sits over everything and makes everything disappear um, but now you can do that again something for us to play with um, and of course part of that is adjusting regional darkness and how that works so we've got a lot more to do with our lighting effects and stuff which is great great uh, again we're going to play with all of this at some point um just not necessarily not sure which order we're going to do the next videos in but we will get to all of this stuff roll and go all right so there is some changes to dice rolling within it um, some of this is not really impactful for us um, but it introduces a new configured dice section for us um, allow users to determine their randomness method so randomizing numbers using a computer is difficult um, because computers are not random they're very precise so you have to do all sorts of weird methods to get what appears to be and looks like a random number um, and many many years ago when I used to do I used to do some coding myself many years ago and I wrote games and doing random number generating um, and it's quite tricky and you end up doing things like well I take the date and the exact time to the second and then I use that to seed a gen random number generator and you can't predict what's coming out so it appears to be random but it's not actually random um, so improvements to that is going to be good um, and you'll notice this there'll be games you play like um, you know things like Baldur's Gate and you kind of go oh I'm having a streak of luck where I keep rolling really well and then you'll have a streak of really bad luck where you keep ro rolling really poorly and sometimes you go I'll reload the game to see if I can reset that it doesn't seem like the dice are random you have these big patches of good and bad rolls um, that's all to do with the problems the challenges of random numbers um, somebody's going to drop in the comments and tells me that I'm really out of date on that <laughs> probably very very possibly but anyway anything that improves that randomness is going to be good and we can actually choose um, the method for that which is nice um, and we have this built-in manual roll now so it wasn't long ago and we looked at one of the add-ons that is for physical dice rolling um, that add-on is pretty much in the bin we don't need it anymore there's a built-in function for it so again we will look at that um, so uh, so by default it will use the digital roll okay but we can set it to manual rolls if we want to so good stuff there um, and we've got some audio improvements as well. So dynamic ambient sound. So we've got dynamic lighting stuff going on. And we've also got some dynamic audio, which is great. That's a really nice mixture of creating an atmosphere. And of course, we've been working on Curse of Strahd. Ooh, I don't know what happened to my voice then. Strahd. <laughs> um, which is all very atmospheric. So more options with that would be absolutely marvellous. Um, so things about high pass, low pass, uh, reverb, bass effects, muffled effects. Um, if you are a music-y type person, you will understand what those things mean in more detail than what it says here. Um, but uh, I'm not really a music -y person. What I do is I hit these things and I just play with them and go, I adjust them up and down until I get something. Uh, you know, I don't really know what I'm doing until it sounds good. That's all that matters. Um, players can now be assigned ownership permissions over playlists, which is interesting. Allows them to control which sounds are playing etc make changes to any part of the playlist um, and stuff like that which is really good and there's audio mixing channels so nice lots of really really good stuff in version 12 and you'll probably be um, watching this kind of going i kind of know all this <laughs> because you, a lot of you will have been keeping up yourselves anyway um talk about some breaking changes here you know just bearing in mind favorite modules might not be updated and that's why i've held off of course all right so um uh, they've gone a little bit here to talk about new features, documents and data, change the default lighting effects, application and user interface. Uh, some of this stuff is a little bit sort of uh, more backgroundy stuff uh, um, to do with the game canvas localization and there's a big bug fixes thing. So this, you know, this um, stable version when it came out, you know, there's lots of little bug fixes, canvas 
updates, etc. So you, again, you can read this in a lot more detail. Just come to foundryvdt.com uh, and you can go to the releases page and it's right here. So this is, when I'm reading this right at the moment, this is version 12.3. 324 okay that I'm looking at so yep it's had its patches already which is great should we get on with the meat of it the reason you're here let's do our update so top right corner I've got my update there I've got my little exclamation mark let's do it this makes me nervous <laughs> so you can see it's telling me what my current version is um software update do i want testing developmental prototype no i want stable thank you very much um which means that we've we're getting those uh, and i should be able to do check for update and it should confirm for us what it says here an update to stable version 12.325 is now available clicking this here it is now be really careful when you're updating we, we don't need to read through all of this because that's what we've just looked at um, yeah, be really, really careful when you're doing this because rolling back, you're not going to be able to do it if you haven't got a backup. All right, make sure you've got a backup. Now, it does at the bottom here, it talks about, uh, oh no, that's the document changes. Right, we, we can create a snapshot. Creating a snapshot will take a backup of every currently installed package, allowing you to later roll back the state of your Foundry VTT installation to a point where the snapshot was taken. Uh, it tells you how much space it's going to take, two gigabytes in my particular case. Um, and optionally, I can provide a note reference. So um, I'm going to call mine initial v12 because this is going to be a snapshot before initially updating that. That's what I'm going to call it. This process can take a long time, depending on the number of packages, etc. Do I want to continue? Yes, I do. And in the background, we can see this whizzing away down here doing all of that stuff. Now, depending how long this takes, it probably won't take very long on my machine, to be honest with you. Um, but if it takes too long, I'm going to edit out everything I'm saying right now and just cut to when that's completed. Because, um, you know, otherwise it's boring, isn't it? <laughs> how are we doing? Progress bar. Here we go. So I can see, you might be able to see just, you know, JB2A is being done there. Backup in progress for JB2A. And, of course, that's quite a big pack. It's got a lot of content in it. That's whizzing through quite nicely. 50% through JB2A. And that is one of the biggest contents we've got. Um, just because it's got so many um, images and automations and animations and things in it. There we go. 80% on that one. Having a quick sip of tea in the background. Nearly there. Nearly there. Brilliant. And most of the others really quick. There goes MIDI QOL. I think that said... Uh, monks something or other <laughs> uh, it's interesting the way the, the, the text keeps moving I mean I don't care as long as it works I don't care but <laughs> it's hard to kind of read it uh, duh, 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 something about fifth edition yep back in progress of the fifth edition I assume that's the game engine back up going there bosh done all right that wasn't too long was it snapshot taken lovely now manual installation required Let's click this uh, and it can preview compatibility, what we're talking about here. Uh, this tour covers, guys, read those, all right? Don't be an idiot like me. Do it. Read it properly. Understand what you're doing. I'm just doing it for expedience of the video. And if I mess it up, that becomes a me problem, all right? <laughs> Don't come and blame me. So this is our compatibility of our existing modules. So let's look at our worlds. So these are all going to be fine, okay, because it will just update those. Obviously, some functions won't work. Um, Systems-wise, not a problem, although I need to update my D&D 5th Edition game engine as well, and I will do that afterwards. I wanted to do Foundry Core first. Um, but it's our modules that potentially we've got the problem. So we've got Raise My Hand here is not updated yet. Um okay that's fine we can we can take that out how can i take it out from here see what would be nice is to say i'll remove it from here but that's okay because I, obviously i can disable them in each game world um stat block importer not currently working about face i've got warning for it about time active auras so we've got them all here but here we go combat hard those are both okay not that we've used those particularly uh, automated invocations, background scaler, 
combat carousel they're all working again remember i said ripper has updated all of his stuff so things like automated invocations because it's one of his free ones it's done combat carousel or carousel combat tracker i always say it the wrong way round is working build a bonus nope not at the moment that's okay chris's pre-made is showing currently not compatible um, i'm sure that will get updated if only you know it might be that it's actually working but it's just not been um, finalized uh Again, all these orange ones not quite working, not quite there at the moment. Maybe okay. There's a warning saying the latest version um, was verified for an old version. It doesn't mean it doesn't work. It just means that it, um, it, it hasn't been verified for the current one. Uh, these red ones actually says the latest version is not compatible. So DFREDS is not compatible at all. So we basically lost DFREDS until that gets actually fixed. Um, or we bin it now again we're moving to version 12 we know it's changing quite a lot of stuff we may not need d threads uh die so nice kind of irrelevant which is great uh mac effect macros that's okay um Florian's quest log we looked at that um and we thought yeah that's really really good but we've not really used it since which is fine um gambit's pre-mades so i just mentioned gambit at the beginning of the video of course currently this is saying that his, the pre-mades are not updated but as per gambit's uh, comment the he's going to look at this anyway so i suspect that will be updated really nice and quickly uh grid scaler i think grid scaler gets binned to be honest i think it will get binned but we'll work out we'll work that out as we go uh, hurry up's all working which is great again it's a ripper so we know that ripper's updated all of his um ben and uh, jules and ben's jb2a probably works anyway but it just hasn't been confirmed um but lots of these are working for us lots of these are working for us the loot sheet mpc 5e simple version we looked at that but i don't actually use it midi item showcase well that's just a bunch of stuff that probably works uh, midi qol currently not updated okay uh, so it says uh, 11.425 and above are compatible with foundry version 12 there's certain to be bugs okay so basically what they're saying is or, or rather uh, posney is saying look it does work but it's not fully verified so it's saying basically it's kind of out of date but it probably works anyway monks active tile triggers is probably going to need a fair bit of work i would imagine i don't understand these things um monk's common display again so monk's got a bit of work to do here poor chap again i've assumed he's a chap uh actually i know he's a chap so that's fine <laughs> um moulinette that we've only just recently looked at oh look lovely no problems with that at all so you can see there's a whole bunch of stuff pop out was already outdated anyway there's a whole bunch of stuff that's already updated and working some things that probably do still work um and some things that definitely don't at the moment but that's okay because we're going to start looking um we're going to start looking at um, building from nothing straight away anyway. Okay, that's what we want to do. All right, brilliant. So uh, are we happy with this? Um, so it says down here, Foundry Virtual Tabletop is now available, cannot be installed within the Foundry Virtual Tabletop because the application... Uh, tabletop application but requires updates to the core dependencies which are only available by reinstalling the software from foundry so we've done all of our backups we've checked our compatibility we know whether we're happy to actually move forward and do this um, but we can't do it from here so we're just going to go straight over and hopefully this doesn't reveal any private information take me directly to my account <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna be even worse <laughs> and it might be because yeah yeah i should should be able to be logged in purchase licenses here um obviously i've got my license um download version there we go i can do it straight through here because there we go you can see top right i am logged in so uh, download version release build this is the one we want this is the recommended release let's do it this way of course now this is going to take a moment top right hand corner you can see it's downloading the setup so i am actually going to not show you um any of my private information when that asks me to install it so if there's a weird cut here that's why 
uh, but as I'm gambling on here, it's only a 93, 193 megabytes. It's not very big. Um, so that's chewing away and I can easily waffle over the couple of minutes that that's taking. <laughs> uh, I think you guys are used to the fact that I can waffle like anything, especially the end of videos. I, go in, I don't know how to end videos. I just waffle away, don't I? Um, but hey, you still seem to come back. So uh, you know, I also look at my statistics and find out what, you know, how close to the end is it? You all just click off and go, yeah, thanks. <laughs> all right, nearly done. I've done it again. Perfect. All right, so let's open file. Obviously, if there's a weird cut, it's because it's going to do hideous things and show stuff I don't want it to show. Here's my end user license agreement, of course. Always read the end user license agreement. Don't do what I do and just click install. Um, and I just want to check that mine is installing on my F drive where I want it. Okay, so I'm going to override that. Um, I had it open. Of course I did. Uh, that should have closed it now. Yep, it has. That's good. I've only got this. So, we are again, we're just going to play the waiting game while this goes through. Hopefully it won't take too many minutes. If it does, again, you'll have an interesting little edit here um, just while we're waiting for this. Um, might even speed up this bit of the video. Shouldn't take too long, though. Would you like me to sing for you? I would dance, but I don't have a camera on, so. Ah, oh, it's going to be finished before I've actually thought of what I could sing for you. Lucky you. Lucky you know you do not want to hear me sing. There's lots of things I'm quite good at. There's lots of, lots of things I'm really bad at. Singing is one of them. <laughs> and anything artistic or musical, absolute trash. Okay, come on, Foundry. Oh, wow, that was quick. Uh, and straight away... It's asking us if we want to run it. So this is going to be our very first time at looking at version 12. Is it doing it? It said it's doing it. Is it doing it? Come on. Right. Brilliant. And of course, I should be able to log in. Okay. Excellent. So that is done. Now, if you look at the top right hand corner, <laughs> I've got 49 warnings. <laughs> Uh, and all nearly all of those are to do with things that we've installed like arms reach you know it's like uh, uh, mm, no not so much active token effects mm, uh, not so much uh, so yeah it's whinging about all of those things that we know are not compatible for us uh, what I do want to do is I want to go to my game system here and I want to uh, check for updates on this as well uh, and as you can see, this is now downloading the latest of the D&D 5 Ed, uh, you know, 5th edition and downloading that as well. So we're all going to be fully updated by the end of this video, ready to rock and roll. Now, what I thought we would do is because we want to look at some of these new functions and not clutter what we've already done. If for those of you, for, um, Bonadan Alloy, for example, who was my first ever subscriber, who's still around, which is brilliant. Thank you very much, sir. Um, right back at the very, very beginning, we started with building from basics and we went, we're not going to put any modules on at all. Let's see what we can do. Well, I won't do it to that length. But I think that's what I want to do is start a completely new game world and just create a couple of different scenes and walk through and play with some of these new functions that are built into Foundry version 12 before we then start looking at how they interact with the various modules and getting back to building. I'm also going to do another video series where we look at some of the Stormwreck Isle scenes and go, OK, what's broken now because of this update? And how do we fix it? Because a lot of you are going to be in that position. When you upgrade, you're suddenly going to go, oh, hang on a minute, it's not working anymore. Where we've used Monk's Act of Tile Triggers, do we need to rip all that out and redo it? Or is it still going to continue functioning? And it doesn't matter that there's another way of doing it in Foundry now. Um, if Monk's is still working, we don't have to go back and fix stuff. So those are a few things we're going to look at, building from scratch in version 12, fixing ones that may be broken because of version 12. Uh, and obviously, guys, the comment section is there for you to say, oh, hang on a minute. Can we look at this? Can you can you have a, you know, a play with that and see how we can now get that to work? Do that because I learned from you guys asking questions I can't answer. <laughs> uh, and if you're asking a question, chances are everybody else is as well. Brilliant. Right. So we've got that updated. See, 
master of waffling through stuff. Now I'm just going to click update all on here as well uh, just to make sure the ones that have been updated because at the moment we've only got a few greens in here. We're just going to make sure it's going to check and update all of these. Lo loads of those are flicking over to be green now. Um, Ugh, makes it a bit vomitous doesn't it the way it's jumping around all over the place um jb2a is being uploaded right now which is great so lots of these things will be updated um so top left right at the moment it says hurry up combat timer that was one that was in inverted commas outdated i think um that now is showing as compatible which is great uh you can see levels here one of rippers that's now working of course we've updated that to this version um Moulinette was already fine that wasn't an issue which is good um what else have we got here uh the tidy 5e sheet that was outdated it's not anymore that one's fixed which is good tokenizer is updated that looks to be fine um we, we've got quite a big download here for jb2a so again we know that that's quite big we know that when we we're doing the backup that was the one that took the longest because it's got all of those graphics and animations so that's going to chew through this might be one where i need to just go <laughs> put some hold music on for you while it's doing it um right what else have we got things like warp gate and uh, wall templates are not updated yet but we haven't finished downloading everything so that might well do wall height gain rippers all working lovely um well a couple of the ones that i particularly want to look at uh so um midi qol yep still currently showing that's not updated of course um where is gambits pre-made again so at the moment showing it's you know not updated so unsupported core version at the moment um it it might it might still have more to check once it's finished this but we'll see same as chris's pre-mades and and d threads here now if you think well when you look at people things like um gambit's pre-mades and chris's pre-mades where they've put a lot of effort into getting these items that they've built and if you change something in the background about the way items function they have to go through all of those items and remake them or adjust them that's that's a lot of work so just in my experience going through we've recently created our own module haven't we with our treasure um, where we can just pull out those gems and things like that that's still a work in progress but if something fundamentally changed on the back end i've got to go through every single one of those items and update it manually um, to then repackage it and send it out so i can imagine for people like you know for, for chris's pre-mades and for gambit's pre-mades there's quite a lot of time and effort that needs to go into updating those things so i have no doubt that they will do it especially as gambit's obviously been in touch literally within the past 12 hours so uh, he's on it he's doing the thing <laughs> so we uh, we may just have to be patient for uh, for those people doing that stuff and please don't give any of these modders grief about how how slow it might be to update i don't know about i don't know about gambit and, uh, and you know chris's pre-mades and things like that but most of these people a bit like me doing these videos this is not my full-time job at all um, i squeeze it around you know family commitments work commitments actually running my own games and playing in games and stuff like that it's um you know give them a break <laughs> these are passion projects um you know and this is a really good opportunity actually just saying that where, where people have got things like their their coffee links and stuff like that um if if you're thinking that you want a, one of these updated and it's not happening as quickly as you like they're probably working as fast as they can but if you go and join their discord if you go drop them a nice comment a supportive thing uh, drop them a coffee or whatever it might be that will really help them feel appreciated for the work that they do and and with this kind of transition that's a really good opportunity to do that so um you don't have to of course you don't um but but yeah let, let's support these modders right could, could you imagine doing this without any of these mods it would be a very different experience using foundry wouldn't it you know especially things like midi qol all right uh 96 i've managed to waffle through nearly all of that <laughs> told you king of waffle okay 99 percent. come on jb2a you can do it you can do it Woohoo! Oh, right. I've now I've got to install it. But this is much, much quicker now it's downloaded. I'm not sure why that took so long. My internet appears to be quite slow today. I'm a bit worried I've got something hideous running in the background. 
um, that's not working for us. Okay, there we go. Woo! So we now get this. Which ones have been updated? Excellent. And there's a lot, isn't there? A lot of them have been updated. Um, so now when we look at this list, we can see that this is much less red on here. A lot more green and quite a lot of orange. All right, so that's it we're all updated we are now as you can see at the bottom version 12 build 325 which is fantastic and at this point i'm going to call this video to an end because you've watched me and listened to me waffle for long enough um but that's the process of going through getting everything updated making sure we've run that back up uh, lots of chat in there as well uh, and in the next videos we will be looking at dealing with these little orange warnings about compatibility and updating our individual worlds creating a new world and having a play so thank you very much for watching i really appreciate it um and again yeah always leave a comment about uh how this is affecting you what you like about it what you're interested in looking at uh, and any challenges you've already faced thank you very much take care and i will see you in the next one